Sooner or later, it happens to all of us. A gremlin gets into the engine, it peters out, and you're stuck on the road. But when it does happen, help can quickly be summoned over VHF, that is, very high frequency radio. Within a radius of 25 miles from the Renfrew works, the vehicles can make direct contact with the transport office, where the call for help is received and the maintenance department is notified by internal telephone. And so by means of this private broadcasting system, operating on a wavelength well outside that of the public service, a breakdown van is soon on its way. In a work the size of Babcock's, much time can be lost by lorries making unnecessary journeys back to the transport office after they complete each job. But the main reason for VHF is to control the vehicles from a central point. In this way, lorries can be rerouted by radio and advised of other jobs while still in transit. When a load is ready to be moved, the planning office notifies the transport office of their requirements. traffic controller can then see from his chart if a vehicle of the right type is available. He contacts the driver by radio and within minutes of the transport office receiving the request, the load is on its way. Photography, the enthusiasts will tell you, is an absorbing pastime. Well, that's not hard to understand. A good photographer never lets his mind wander from the subject. Why should he? Undoubtedly, photography has its fascinating moments. One way and another, it is a rewarding art. The closer you get to it, the more you enjoy it. But it has its practical side too. Throughout their organization, B&W makes wide use of modern photographic processes. This is a method of making photographic records of invoices, account sheets and other numerous but necessary papers on miniature film that can be stored in a small space. When the operator wishes to refer to one of the recorded documents, she feeds the spool into the viewer, which projects the negative at full size onto the screen. Draftsmen and designers know the difficulty of keeping drawings and tracings undamaged in cupboards or drawers. Photographic storage is simpler and safer. When a drawing is wanted for reference, the projecting instrument brings it back correctly to scale, unharmed by cockling, fading or fraying. Modern X-ray equipment provides a valuable service at the B&W Medical Center. The use of X-ray photography has revolutionized medical work and made the diagnosis of internal symptoms many times surer. In the manufacture of high-pressure boiler drums and welded pressure vessels, Every inch of welding is x-rayed as a routine measure. Inch by inch, the radiographs are examined. These men are doing specialist work. Their watchfulness maintains the Babcock reputation. Equal care is taken at the Harrow Works of Kodak Limited, where newly manufactured X-ray film is being inspected before it leaves the factory. Spools are machine-wound, ready for packing. Much of the material used by B&W for various photographic processes 
is made at these famous works. As this company helps us in our work, so we contribute to theirs. Our boilers have been giving efficient service in the Kodak factory for many years. And now, new oil-fired Babcock boilers, like this one, are being installed. The whole steam and electrical system serving the works is centrally controlled by one man. When next you load your camera with Kodak film, think that in all probability, Babcock and Wilcox played a part in its production. Perhaps you had a hand in it yourself. Dog snaps at man would be no news. Man snaps dog, well, that's one for the record anyway. You know an embroidery frame when you see one. It belongs to a tradition many centuries old. The young hands that delight in it now are learning their skill from an unexpected source. Willie Shannon, expert embroiderer, is a draftsman at the Renfrew works of Babcock and Wilcox. His working day is devoted to weightier concerns than needle and thread, but once that is over, he turns for contrast to the delicate finesse of needlework. The young learner is Willie's niece. One day, she hopes to master the art as he has. She has far to go if that ambition is to be fulfilled. Willie is more than a skilled craftsman. He creates his own designs. Each design is sketched on paper first. The tracing is taken from the original drawing and the design transferred from tracing to fabric. Willie took up this hobby during the war. Today, he is passing on the tradition not only to his niece at home, but to youth club classes and others eager to benefit from his mastery. Among many awards he has won, he prizes most of all the shield of the Scottish Needlework Guild. Zoom! It's a hunter jet, which Stan Cause of Babcock's research department made for his air-minded young son. This one was built from a bought kit, but it gave Stan the idea that he could do better off his own bat. Working from photographs and silhouettes, he designed his own set of parts and began building a fleet of model planes of pre-war vintage. Each part is carefully scaled and marked off on a balsa wood sheet, following a pre-arranged constructional scheme. Then comes the cutting. With small-scale work like this, you have to take it as a precision job. Piece by piece, the plane is assembled. The completed aircraft will be painted in authentic colors, trimmed up and powered by elastic. There she stands, true to her prototype, another addition to the miniature air fleet. An incoming aircraft is announcing its approach to the control tower at Renfrew Airport. Surface wind 270 degrees at 15 knots. Over. The plane comes into land. Throughout its journey, controllers along the route have guided it safely from point to point. The airways of Britain are crowding up. The sky has its traffic problems now, no less than land or sea. Continuous control is essential to the safety of timetable flight. As the plane rolls up the runway, the apron marshal flags it to its final stopping place.
While their bags are being unloaded, the passengers are taken to the airport lounge and within minutes of the plane landing are on their way by coach or car. As like as not, you'll find a Babcock man somewhere on the passenger list, taking the quickest way home from head office in London. As the main Renfrew works are only a few steps from the airport, Babcock staff and clients readily take advantage of this link with the company's organization in all parts of the world. Renfrew is Britain's second largest airport. Airliners from every quarter fly in and out all day. The plane from London will have about 30 minutes for turn round. Already the passengers for the return journey are checking in their baggage. While the ground staff are refueling and servicing the aircraft, the crew come in for the weather reports that will help them on their way back. In the briefing room, the captain gets his route instructions. It is his duty to make an estimate of his times of arrival over each of the control points along the way. This forms the flight plan, which will be passed on to the ground controllers. Luggage and freight are loaded on the aircraft according to a prepared chart, which ensures an even distribution of weight. Within the airport, passengers are marshaled to and fro by the apron controller. Will all passengers proceeding to London by flight number 917 and holding boarding card number 4... The stewardess checks the passengers as they embark to make sure that all are present who should be and that no one is catching the wrong plane. Finally, when all is ready and the aircraft has been cleared by control, the engines are started and the passengers settle in. The aircraft taxis out to the runway and in a matter of moments will be airborne.